Okay, so I want to thank my man, President Harris Pastides, for coming back on the show. You know, I always love to have you on the No BS show. It's my favorite show. Thank you. I want you. to thank my man, Brian, for uh, coming back. Thank you, thank you. giving me another chance. Of course. <laughs> hey, you got lots of chances. You can. <laughs> so, I want to know, what, what have you been up to? What's new with you? Well, you know, we had a hurricane. Mm -hmm. uh, a guy named Matt, Matthew, we called him Matt, and... Uh, you know, couldn't know really up until that morning whether it was going to affect Columbia. We mm -hmm. had to uh, cancel classes for three days. That's never easy. Uh, but we had to uh, cooperate with the uh, uh, evacuees. And, of course, we uh, postponed the football game for a day. Mm -hmm. And some people thought it was a good idea, some people not a good idea. But that's what goes on when you're the president. Yeah. You work with your team and do what you think is right. Mm -hmm. And I got to I gotta commend you. I think you did a great job handling that. You know, you gave people, you know, enough notification. Hey, things might be moved around, so be prepared. So I think you handled it very well, you know. Well, thank you. Well, communication is 90% of uh, almost any problem. Mm -hmm. uh, your ability to let people know you don't know all the answers, but you're going to work on it. Let people know what may happen mm -hmm. or may not happen. And people really admire that. And it's, it's like the simplest thing. Mm -hmm. The yep. hardest thing is to know what to do. <laughs> the simplest thing is to share with people, you know, what your thinking is. Yeah, I agree with you. So um, this August, your tenure of being the president of the board of directors for the NCAA concluded. And then you now began your, uh, your position as being the vice president of the Southeastern Conference. So first I want to ask you, what was it like to be the you know, president board director for the entire NCAA. What do you want to be remembered for? Well, it was a lot of pressure. Let me start with that. I could be glib and say it was great and cool. I sat at the uh, half court line for a couple of final fours mm -hmm. and got to meet famous uh, athletes and other celebrities. But what I'll remember mainly is how close we came to having a disruptive event for student athletics. Uh, with a number of famous uh, trials that were going on mm -hmm. and other pressures in the media. And I hope, not that I would ever take credit for it, certainly not personally, but I hope we're a stronger uh, organization right now. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you think of the NCAA, you have to concede that there needs to be an organization to keep it all together. So if it's not that one, it's going to be another one. And I think we're stronger today mm -hmm. than we were a few years ago. Yeah. You definitely dealt with a lot of with a lot of big events and big headline um, situations that occurred over the last few years. Um, but now, as the vice president of the SEC, mm -hmm. what are you looking to? you know, contribute, to improve, to stay the same? What are you looking at? Well, first of all, you know, our success and our competitiveness, we are the best athletic conference. I think mm -hmm. most people would agree with that. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy being number one because everybody's gunning for you. Yep. The ACC is going to have a, a new ESPN network down the road. The Big 12 is thinking of reorganizing uh, and maybe expanding. And so I can't worry about the others, but I can worry now about how we keep everything the SEC does fresh mm -hmm. and competitive and win national, ch or at least compete for national yeah. championships. And, uh, and by the way, uh, USC, mm -hmm. I think, is in my target for, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, for winning uh, some of those as well. I think so. Maybe in the hopefully near future with some of our teams, but we'll get to that. Now, how do you, how do you balance all that with you know, being the president of the University of South Carolina, which is no small school? And also being, you know, in charge of one of the, you know, probably the most powerful sporting conference, caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know. Uh, but all really kidding aside, I do wake up very early. I work mm -hmm. out in the morning. I try to stay physically fit. That uh, increases my energy. Mm -hmm. I stay up too late at night because there's always more work to do. I have a great family life. I have mm -hmm. good friends. I have good colleagues. I delegate and depend on my uh, executive leadership team. We have a good board of trustees. Mm -hmm. I get replenished when I high-five or take a selfie with a student mm -hmm. running uh, well, you know, around the horseshoe or wherever. Uh, but it's not a job you can have uh, forever. It's not a career. Mm. It's something that you do and you give the best that you have for the time you have it. And when, you're, uh, when you believe you're getting tired or have given the most you can, then you click your heels and salute, mm -hmm. and let somebody else do it. So. I think that, I think that's interesting. You made a career in higher education mm -hmm. before this, so I think I think that's a very interesting point you made. So now, 
recently, you know, we've had um, a lot of situations on campus with alcohol and, you know, fraternities and sororities. So last year it was more with the fraternities. There's some situations where a lot of, um, there's a lot of underage drinking and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That got, well, there's always been underage drinking, but um, there's been more trips to the hospital mm -hmm. this year with um, the sororities. There's been a number of girls who have been found, you know, you know, in five points the next morning on someone's, you know, uh, front, um, right outside the front door. So I want to ask you, you know, is there something different this year that you think is, you know, affecting the school or maybe overall college life? Let, let, let me start, but don't take this defensively. Mm -hmm. Let me start out by saying this is a national problem. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's worse here. Uh, number two, we're a bigger university, and when you have more students, you're going to have more events. So when the denominator for our math mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. out there, when the denominator is bigger, even if the rate remains the same, the numerator is going to be bigger. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be more transports and more... Now, having said that, that's not what really my comment, because I think any one incident is one too many. I do think, as well, there is more reporting. We have created a culture starting with freshman orientation then what, that when you see something that shouldn't be, you, the Carolinian Creed actually obliges you to speak out, stand up, speak out, report it, because not because we want people to get in trouble, but because we want to help them. Yeah. And so I do think uh, some of the apparent increase is probably a, uh, a fact that we're bigger. Now having said that, uh, it's a you know it's a terrible thing. Uh, we find it uh, worse, ironically, in the younger students. By the time students are seniors, they've figured a lot of things out. They actually are more worried about their own future. They realize that drinking is not a pathway to be a successful person. Whereas the freshmen who've been in high school. They are dying to get here and have a good time, and then there's a lot of peer pressure. So, mm -hmm. uh, but we're working on uh, things we could do better. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and even one problem is is one too many. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was going to I was going to ask you what I know. This is you know, there's people that do this for jobs to try to figure out what you could do, what the school can do, what can change, what can you know add to bring down these issues. But off, like, what do you think? is something that the school can do to help the drinking problem. Well, I, I'd say, first of all, continue to educate. Mm -hmm. uh, that's more on what I'll call the voluntary side, help students make better choices themselves. Number two, we can enforce mm -hmm. the rules. And, uh, and, and whether a student likes it or not, if they do get an underage drinking citation or a DUI, that can remain part of their permanent record. And so mm -hmm. we're telling them that before they have it. Yeah. When you apply to law school or grad school or apply for a job, there you cannot run from anything anymore. They will do a quick search, a quick Google search, and they will know what happened. And that's going to be a black mark uh, against your record. Number three, we can work with the bartenders in five points. I think there are these drink specials that make it cheaper to drink more. Mm -hmm. You know, shouldn't it be the less you drink, the more money you save? Yep. But no, if you buy five at a time, or and I don't even know all of the details, and we don't think that's right. Mm -hmm. But then you're going against, if you will, the American spirit of making a profit. But I think we can work with them and say that's just not healthy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and other things as well. Yeah, I think I think those are great ideas. Um, now, a few about a month ago or so, U.S. News came out their uh, annual rankings for um, universities. And they ranked the University of South Carolina number 107 in the nation with an overall score on their rankings of 46 out of 100. And now, I know this isn't the only uh, organization that does the rankings, but they're one of the most um, highly respected. Now, I want to know how you felt about those rankings, because I think those are disrespectful. Because mm -hmm. I think we're a top 10. And, that's, and I don't know Me if too. I don't know if I'm, you know, if I'm just being too close to it or what. Well, I, I, I could, I don't want to make it too long an answer, but mm -hmm. I fully agree with you, by the way. And, uh, uh, but A, uh, we actually rose in the rankings, mm -hmm. so that was good. But the rankings, unfortunately, at some level, don't look at what you do with students. They look at who you take. And if we wanted to be less open, less impactful, 
uh, more elite and cut out a whole bunch of students and tell them you can't come here, be, then our rankings would go up. But I don't want to chase that mm -hmm. kind of ranking. I think the rankings ought to be about what you do with the students who you admit, not how good are the students who you admit. And so I can't be overly um, worried about a ranking that will say that a smaller school that turns away students who can do the work is a better school. Because that's not what I want for USC. Mm -hmm. In college, is it time to come in and then become something else of course. and improve? And I think that's what they do miss out on. And I think the problem is when you're not here, you don't know. You don't know what they're missing out on. You know what, what you're really looking at. Yeah, I agree with you. Now, um, I'm gonna. I know you have a lot of other things to do, so I want to ask you one final question. We always talk about this. I want to know how you feel about. This semester, sports, a football team, sure, interesting year. But then soccer has been doing very well. So let me see, let me hear what you what well, you've been watching. Let me start with football right off the bat mm -hmm. and say I have full confidence in Coach Will Muschamp. He is a born winner. Uh, he is a fierce recruiter, and he will win. Uh, I say that as a prediction or as a challenge to people who don't believe that. Now this is not his full team. He inherited this team, they're wonderful players, and he's got to work in the remaining half of the season to knock off, in my opinion, one of those big teams we have left to play, mm -hmm. and I hope he can. But he is building brick by brick, recruit by recruit, and you stay tuned. We will uh, compete for and win the SEC East, and I hope the SEC. Women's soccer, number two in the country, undefeated won a, uh, an overtime game last night against Vanderbilt, mm -hmm. they might win the SEC and maybe a national championship. Yeah. Uh, we're going into basketball season, of course, a high hopes for the women who are nationally ranked and for the men, and of course our other fall sports that include uh, volleyball mm -hmm. and uh, moving into softball practice and baseball. So, uh, look, I'm a Gamecock, win or lose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, am I uh, jumping for joy, uh, having lost uh, close games in football this year already? Uh, no. I would have preferred that it was uh, a storybook season, yep. but it looks like it's going to be maybe not that, but it's going to be, I hope it's going to be a respectable season, mm -hmm. and I am confident uh, we will be back. So if you're a Gamecock fan, do not despair. Just be a little bit patient. So I want to thank you for coming back on the show. Um, we always love having you on the show. The listeners always enjoy the interviews, so thank you very much. Well, and I want to say we have something new in common I didn't know about. Of course, we're both from New York, mm -hmm. uh, our musical tastes, well... <laughs> so you like Drake. Yeah, well, <laughs> because of you. Because of you. Now everybody knows Drake. Well, I'm the only person who didn't know him. Now I do. Uh, but we also have the wa watches. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Our watches are almost yeah. identical. Look at this. Style. We got some style. Oh, wow. I thought like for this. a minute you were like a magician and you got my watch. <laughs> and so that's, that's a little too much New York right there. <laughs> so good to be with you. Thank you, Solomon. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>